There are a number of policies we can associate with our accounts, and one of these policies is around passwords. We want to be sure that our passwords are as strong as possible. We want to be sure, for instance, we're not using just single words or obvious passwords, especially if somebody's trying to target your account. They know the name of your dog. They know the name of your son or your daughter. Then they know you might use that as your password. So you want to be sure that you don't do that. Make sure you mix uppercase and lowercase. Make it difficult for somebody to figure that out. And you might even want to use special characters. But be careful when doing this. You don't want to do some of the more common things like taking the letter O and replacing it with a zero or the letter T and replacing Placing it with a seven. The bad guys know about that. They understand that that's what people do to help them remember some of these passwords. And so their brute force process automatically starts replacing some of these letters and numbers so that they can try to figure out what your password may, might be, even if you think that you're being a little bit crafty. They're on to you. You also want to think about your password length and make sure that it's at least eight characters long. That makes it very, very difficult for the bad guys to randomly try to figure out what your password might be. Even longer than eight characters is really good. If you had a 14-character password, that would be really good. And we're calling these passwords as if it's a single word, but you should really think about using a phrase or multiple words put together. The more difficult we make this and the more different than a dictionary word we make this, the harder it's going to be for the bad guys to figure out what our password is. In most environments, your password's going to expire. After 30 days, after 60 days, after 90 days, we're going to make it so that you have to put in a brand new password. And although sometimes that's a bit of a pain and we have to remember it, and there's so many processes associated with that in our brain just to keep track of that, it really is a very good security policy because even if somebody had access to your account and they knew your password, it would only be good for a maximum of 30 days. And then we know they wouldn't have access to the network any longer. Some of your critical systems might even an update even more than that. In some very, very high security environments, they might change the password every day. So you walk in the door, you get your password for the day, and then you would use that. At the end of the day, it would change to something completely different. The recovery process for this should probably not be very trivial either. There have been times when I've reset my password corporately. I've called the corporate help desk. I said, hi, it's James. Could you please reset my password? They said, sure, your new password's cookie. Log in again and change that. But they really didn't know it was me. It was them trusting me on the telephone, talking to them. If I was a bad guy, I would now be able to log in with the James account and use the password cookie. And now I'd have access to everything that James had access to as well. Some environments, they make it a lot more difficult. You have to go to a room. You have to see a person. You have to be there in person for them to be able to change your password. If you've ever forgotten your password and you've had to type it in and try it, maybe I'll try this one. No, that wasn't it. Let me try another one. No, that wasn't it either. After a certain number of tries, you may have found that you've locked out your account. It's an automated thing that happens after 10 tries, after 20 tries, it automatically locks that account. And even if you remembered then what your password was, you still would not be able to log in because the system has recognized that this could be the bad guys trying over and over and over. And even if the bad guys hit on what your password might be, didn't matter. We've already locked the account. You don't have access to it anyway. So this is kind of a normal thing for most user accounts. You need to be careful about doing this for service accounts. These are the accounts that do things like transfer mail back and forth into and out of our organization. If the bad guys try to use this same brute force attack on that service account, what you could find is that after 20 tries, it locks up the mail account, and now no mail can go back and forth. So sometimes on service accounts, we don't see this logged in. Although if you're a smaller organization and you'd like to know if somebody was trying to use brute force attacks on your service accounts, maybe you'll turn that on and you deal with any outages that might occur because of that. When somebody leaves the organization, normally we just disable their account. We don't delete everything that's there, at least not initially. That's because we have a number of processes on our operating systems today that use a lot of encryption. And if somebody leaves the organization and everything that they've been working on is encrypted, by deleting that account, you could inadvertently be deleting the decryption key. So you want to be sure that you have a process to transfer over all of the files and everything associated with that user to someone else or to a new user or to an administrative function. That way, if you finally delete the account, you're not actually getting rid of any important encryption keys. 
All of these account policies work together so that we can be assured that when people are using the network, they're logging into the network and logging out, the environment is as secure as possible.